So today I'm going to be doing a Christmas themed book review. This is only part one. There's ten books that I have all together and I have to finish one of them. So this is the first five that I have. They're, they don't go together or anything. The only thing we have in common is that they're Christmas. And so let's just get right into it. So the first book, first book I'm going to show you is the Chesapeake Shores um, series, and this is, I think this is, like, the fifth book in the series, I'm not really sure, it's, yeah, I think it's the fifth book in the series, and you do have to read this book, because I know sometimes when you read a series, sometimes if there's, a, like, a specific holiday, it might not be centered around the, um, this, this series, it might just be, like, a Christmas story, and that's it, but this one does, you have to read this, so you guys have to read this, you can't skip over it because it does um, have the storyline in it for the next book. This is called A Chesapeake Shores Christmas. It's by Cheryl Woods. I found this at Walmart. And this is what it looks like. And what this book is basically about, it's, it, if you have ever watched Chesapeake, Chesapeake Shores on Hallmark, it is way different than the book. So if you haven't read the books and you watch the show and you're afraid if you read the books, it's going to spoil something in it. Um... It doesn't go it doesn't go along with the show so yeah and then each book in the series is about one of the one of the people in the O'Brien family this book is about um their it's about the the kids parents Mick and Megan <clears throat> And they separated a long time ago when the kids were really small, and now all the kids are adults. And from the past four books, if you read the first four books, it does hint that they are getting back together. But Megan, in the last book, she wanted to make sure, so she wanted to make sure that he has changed and he's there for his kids. And in this book, it's basically they want to get married. And Mick wants to get married on New Year's New Year's Day. And what happens is is their youngest son, Andrew. Is that his name? Yes, Andrew. No, Connor. Connor, I'm sorry, it's Connor. <laughs> the guy who plays Connor in the show, his name is Andrew in real life. Connor does, is dead set against it. He doesn't want his parents to get back together. And he knows this because he knows that there isn't true love because he's a divorce lawyer. And he knows this just based on his job and everything. So his their mother doesn't want to get married because he wants she wants to make sure that everybody, all of her kids, all of the family is on the same track. That they are happy to have her back in their lives and stuff. And then one day when they're celebrating for Christmas... Connor has a deep dark secret that shows up at their door and it goes so it's basically that's when the two stories intertwine together where the parents are trying to help Connor deal with the situation his secret and there's Mick still wants to get married and rush it to get married on New Year's Day but Megan isn't really that keen on it because she thinks it's happening way too fast but you'll just have to see if somebody gets married at the end of this book so the next book I'm going to show you is the last book that I finished before doing this video this is called A Puzzle in a Pear Tree it's by Parnell Hall I guess that's how you say his or her last name I don't know if that's uh man or a woman's name but this is what it looks like and I've had these I read a couple of these books before but this one I had to save because it was a Christmas one um this one I got at a flea market all the books besides the Chesapeake Shore one I got from a flea market or book sale or something and a puzzle in a pear tree is basically about this girl she's a woman she's called the puzzle lady and she's supposed to apparently have um be be able to solve any kind of crossword puzzle of any kind but in reality it's her niece that solves the puzzles and her niece that makes the crossword puzzles and stuff in the newspaper and all that kind of stuff so what happens is, is in this book they're trying to put on a christmas play and it's called the 12 days of christmas just like the song if you haven't heard the song that's like my favorite song because i know all of the um days and what goes with them. That was like my favorite Christmas song ever. Um, what happens is, is Cora, 
is in this play, and these mysterious red envelopes start showing up, and they come, they go throughout the whole, the whole book, and what happens is, is these, inside of these envelopes, there's these acro acrostic, or acrostic puzzles, and these acrostic puzzles, they're kind of like a crossword puzzle, where you have to answer a clue, and then you write the clue on these little blanks that they have set up for you, and each, under each blank is one, le one, one number, and you have to fit it into the puzzle, um, and then the puzzle makes, like, basically like a secret message kind of thing, and she has to make sure that when they bring these puzzles to her, that they don't, they don't think she's a fraud, and she has to keep that secret, plus she has to figure out who killed this one woman when they're doing their live nativity scene in this town. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in it, and it's a really good book. Like, these books are really good. The Puzzle Lady books are really, really funny, too, in my opinion. Um, this is what it looks like. They're really good. Okay, so this one, I only, now this one has two books in it. The first book, the first story is about, is by Debbie Maycomber, and it's called Mr. Miracle, and that's the only one I read in it, because the next book was about, is, I don't know if I forget the lot, the second book doesn't even go, she didn't even write the second book that's in this, it's like an excerpt or a bonus novel that's in it, and it's, um, by Christina Syke or Sky or however you say her last name. I didn't read that one because it really, if she didn't, if Debbie McComber didn't write it, I wasn't going to read it. Um, just because of the fact that this book is her book or whatever. I don't know. I just didn't feel like reading it because it probably wouldn't be as good as the first story in this book. So I only read the first story, which was the Debbie McComber story, which is called Mr. Miracle. And this is what it looks like. It's basically about this angel, this man who's an angel, who comes down to Earth to help with um, a person's problem. Just like probably like a lot of different um, movies nowadays, well, during Christmas season. And his job is to get the title woman, what's her name? Addie. Yeah, Addie. Addie to figure out what is her meaning in life. Like, how is she going to get her life back on track? Because her dad died. She has dyslexia. She never finished um, high school. All these different things. And throughout the book, she takes care of this man who she hate, hated ever since she was a little kid. And now she has to take care of him. And... She's doing that, and then the angel is trying to keep his cool so people don't figure out that he's an angel. And he has to make sure that he doesn't do things that he can't do because he's an angel or get involved with humans because he's an angel. So, yeah, it was a really good book. I really liked it. It was, like, I think that was, like, in my top three Christmas books, like, of all time that I've read. This one was a cute book. It's it's a long book, but it's cute. And it's called A Red Bird Christmas, and the red bird is a cardinal bird. Um, if you've never seen them, they are obviously red. And they have, like, a black um, face except for their nose. And this is by Fanny Flagg, and this is what it looks like. And this book was really cute. It's about this man who, he gets this terrible diagnosis that he's got this, something's wrong in his lungs or something where he has to live, um, cold really affects his, I forget what it was called, but it affects his lungs really, really bad, the cold, so he has to go live in a warmer climate, and he ends up, um, living in this small town in the war, in a warmer state where he, decides he's gonna um, play out his last couple months he has because the doctor said that he only had a couple months to live. And here, it's basically like this community who gets involved with this one child, this one little girl who the people that she was with weren't her parents and they were really bad to her because she had this thing wrong with her leg and so, um, this guy and this woman take this girl in, um, they didn't adopt her at first or anything, they just took her in, and then with the help 
of the community, they got together and helped her get a leg surgery. And she falls in love with this little red bird that lives in this, the general store that's in this little town. And an event happens in it that changes it. And I don't want to give it away because it's a really cute little thing that happens in this book. It's really cute. I really like it. If you really like, um, like Christmassy, homey stories, this is like one that's really good. And there does have like a few things happen at the end of the book that are like little miracles kind of, um, based on the red bird. The red bird does play a major role in it. But probably not until, like, the last half of the book. So, I mean, he, the book, the the Red Bird, the Cardinal, is in the book the whole time. But, yeah. So, this book is probably going to be the most boring one out of the whole entire thing. Because it's, like, histor this book, I'm going to show you, excuse me, is a historical book. It's not, like, a story, like a Christmas story or anything like that. But it's about Christmas, and it's called The 4,000 Years of Christmas, A Gift from the Ages. It's by Earl W. Count and Alice Lawson Count, and this is what it looks like. It's a small little book. And basically what it does is, is it goes through the history of Christmas. Like, how did we get to Christmas? How did we make Christmas a thing? How did we de start decorating a tree? Um, the real story of St. Nicholas, which is Santa Claus... Um, all these different things. It doesn't go into, like, a lot of, um, things. It just basically goes about, it's basically more of, like, the religious, the religious stuff more so than, like, their stuff. So, and, and the thing that I never, that I really liked about, that I never knew about is Christmas was actually started, or, no, the concept of Christmas, I guess, was originally started way back, further, way earlier than when Jesus was born. And I thought that was pretty interesting because I always thought that Christmas was when Jesus was born. That's when Christmas started and, you know. But it was a really good book. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was like it was boring, boring. It was just like, like it was, I'm not just saying, and so I'm, not, I'm not saying it was boring beyond boring. I'm just saying that it wasn't like a story. It was basically just like the history of Christmas. It was a really cute little book. And there was like cute little... Lot, it was a short book. There was, there was only 103 pages in it, and then the rest is an index. And there are little, like, red stamp kind of plated pictures in it. I don't know how to describe it. I mean, let me see if I can find one. Like this. They're, like, red. They look like they're, like, stamped into the book. This is what it looks like. And they're all like that. They're all red. But, um, yeah, that was my Christmas, my Christmas review part one. And when I finish the last book that I have for Christmas, I will gladly do the second part for you guys so comment below and tell me some of your favorite things that you like to do for christmas or some of your favorite christmas traditions i'll see you guys next time with another video and hope you guys have a wonderful day